वेलकम वेलकम टू बिटेनिंग सो दिस स्पेशल मीडिया कवरेज इज इज पावर्ड बाय पॉलीगॉन हु आर द टाइटल स्पॉन्सर एंड एक्सचेंज पार्टनर इज मुद्रिक्स टुडे इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉडकास्ट वी वी आर रिकॉर्डिंग विद यू नो आई नो यू गाइस हैव एप्टॉस विद यू एंड यू कीप आस्किंग मी टेल अस समथिंग मोर अबाउट एप्टॉस यू कीप आस्किंग प्रलव व्हाट इज द फ्यूचर ऑफ एप्टॉस इज द मीम मीम कॉइन्स कमिंग टू एप्टॉस व्हाट व्हाट अबाउट द टीवीएल ऑफ एप्टॉस how the defi is evolving on aptos tell me the favorite meme coin uh, you know because meme coin culture is still missing on aptos uh, give me some alpha i mean i am tired of all these questions to be honest because first we wanted to have an understanding of what is it aptos why it is making all the noise right what is uh, move as a language i mean uh, because now we are seeing that uh, you know uh, uh, it's it's all about move versus solidity most people are saying that the major success behind aptos is the language uh, and and that we will obviously try and understand so ladies and gentlemen if you really want to understand aptos uh, from scratch i mean this podcast you cannot miss i mean and i'm sure uh, the way uh, this podcast will turn up will leave lot of alpha as well and i'm sure you are searching for alphas so if you remember the team at aptos is from the team that was building libra the, the facebook era and most of the team uh, migrated from libra to uh, aptos and uh, so th- this made a lot of noise back then that most of the facebook guys i mean the team at working at libra has moved on to their own project so avery is first of all welcome to india i i am i hope that india is treating you well so uh, is this your first visit to india and if you can tell something about your background and from where this idea of aptos uh, came into your mind great thanks for the introduction it's my second trip to india this year second trip to bangalore specifically it's been wonderful weather and uh, it's great to be able to be here my background i was born in honolulu hawaii i went to school in western for 9 years i got a phd uh, in computer computing I went to Rio for 4 years and then met up for the next 10 years after that. Uh during that time that's where I uh, got familiar with uh with data infrastructure, worked on our platforms to support uh cross cross space. Uh was there for 7 years and then 2018 is when we joined the Libra Dean project. That was the very early days of kind of understanding like hey, blockchain is interesting. What can we do with it? Uh and then kind of start experimenting and say well, our mix platform, a payments platform that support payments 24/7 around the world to the largest use cases of many things to get done Visa Mastercard Uber Lyft you know all the big problems out there a uh, very important problem to solve and so for that we needed to do a couple of things we need to first create a new language that's new uh, that would support developers getting from ideation to production as quickly and safely as, as possible another thing is that we built system infrastructure that can scale and so we designed an entire pipeline of not you know what the DM was but what we believe uh um, would be supporting going to the world uh pipeline processing uh parallelism the form of dynamic parallelism we support the, the best consensus protocols in the world and by doing that we could yeah, yeah, sure by doing that we would then uh, be able to support every internet use case out there um unfortunately we couldn't launch it within meta uh there are definitely challenges in that space and so being the suburban people we were we decided to step out of meta and make sure that happened on our own and that's how kind of atlas is born So uh like you know move is a language that was kind of uh, initiated by Facebook and then Aptos adopted it and tried to make it into real life right what as per you is the reason why a developer in general technologically should be choosing move and uh, uh, you know should be choosing move over solidity solidity and evms have got adoption they have been on scale they have a very good developer community if i am for example as as a developer as an engineer if i have a problem if i have a question i just put it on stack overflow i can just get my answer on ethereum right that's not the case for move so what are the reasons why developers and in general technologically it makes sense to choose move over solidity the language uh, in which aptos uh, smart contracts are written good question so let's think even about what blockchains are typically built in for language today Early in the days of uh, development, they were built in Go, for example, or C plus plus or Java. And now today, almost every blockchain is developed is using Rust. Why was that? Why was that change happening? It was because people realized that for something that kind of holds money and assets, you have to something that's extremely secure, robust, reliable, as well as high performing. Rust is that solution for that that, that space. It's a system software infrastructure. I think the same thing is true for the EVM and Merge space. Right? So EVM Great first language, 
uh, really the first smart contracts platform to be developed in this space. But it doesn't kind of get us where we need to be. It doesn't support the throughput that we need to have. It doesn't support the feature set we need to have, the onboard adoption. And so Move is designed to be almost like a Rust for Web3. Not necessarily the easiest language to code in, but the one that is the, the best in terms of like, if I want to build something, what are the least chances of me making a mistake? It's going to cause me to lose potentially billions of dollars. And we've seen so many hacks with EVMs in the space around even challenges around dynamic dispatch not being done safely or other kind of challenges as well. And so for developers coming to space, you want to build in a modern uh, uh, Web3 programming language with modern tooling that supports uh, even new features that aren't, aren't really necessarily possible in their languages, such as formal verification. Like these kind of things are only possible in a new experience like Move. And so, you know, while Move was developed originally at, at Meta, we've taken that much, much further into the future, uh, thinking about Move 2. Move 2 is a new kind of take of the new iteration language that supports new features, which is uh, things like higher order functions, uh, simpler syntax, um, uh, more powerful features around safe dynamic dispatch and safe objects. Um, those things are only possible by redesigning language from the ground up. And so that's why I think, again, you know, we, we believe that this, in order to get developers to work at scale for Web3, they've got to have a new programming paradigm. The existing ones don't work. And so that's why Move is born. So what are some of, given like, you know, uh, the advocation for Move, what are some of the applications in general which are possible in Move, which would never be possible with EVMs and, you know, Ethereum or Layer 2 specifically? Um, I'll just start with a simple feature. So randomness, obviously randomness, something only available on Aptos Move, uh, where every transaction you kind of uh, have a chance to get access to a random number, which is unbiasable. So the validators kind of compute this very interesting proof stake based randomness uh, formula uh, using uh, uh, some magical cryptography. And then you can, from your, co your code, just kind of call it and get a random, get a random number. Uh, this is available as transaction out there. And so you can build games, you can build casinos, you can build um, you know, poker. Anything you want to do is possible with this feature. Um, the other thing you can do, of course, that's not easy, is adding uh, things like Aptos Keyless into the move stack itself. So Aptos Keyless is a way to authenticate your, uh, your custody of uh, an account with a Google, uh, Google access, with a Apple ID, uh, with potentially SMS over time. And that will then tie to a backend Aptos address using a zero-loss proof. Now you can do this in other blockchains by building higher level abstractions above it, but in Aptos is natively integrated into it. Everything is enshrined into the base layer. And that's something very unique with Move. Yeah. Uh, one more question that always comes up, and you know, I think Movement try to build on that particular thing itself is, when Aptos went live, I'm sure Ethereum was already uh, securing over tens of billions of dollars, right? And building a layer one from scratch is not easy. Did Aptos not think of becoming a layer two on the uh, Ethereum ecosystem itself, taking security from Ethereum and you know building it, building the layer two on Move? What was the decision which led you guys to build a layer one ecosystem by itself from scratch? So we felt. You know, layer twos, I mean, nothing against layer twos. Uh, they're usually a scaling method for EVM. Uh, and then, you know, fees being closer to the main chain. For us, we want to build something like, in order to kind of rethink, how do we build infrastructure that supports all 5 billion internet users out there? I think it requires, it requires a complete rethinking of the entire platform from the ground up. So instead of kind of being dependent on an EVM uh, for kind of security or for anything else, we wanted to have a completely new system. And that meant new language, new layer one, new architecture, uh, new functionality, uh, so that people can really reimagine the way they think about composing web applications and what's possible in that space. So uh, we all know that uh, before Aptos and uh, Sui, you know, when most, so most people say that the ex-Facebook uh, team, couple of guys moved to Sui and couple of guys moved to Aptos. And Aptos and Sui, uh, are really going to uh, do well, and and we are seeing that. I know that you are working with uh, working at Aptos, but tell me, uh, how, do you like Sui? What they are doing? I mean, honestly, and, and do you believe that after Aptos and Sui, uh, when nobody actually heard about Move as a language, you think that things have really changed after the arrival of Aptos and Sui, and the whole dynamics have changed? I think in general, post Libra, a lot of things have happened. Um, you know, David Marcus started a company called LightSpark, Aptos, obviously, Sui, obviously, uh, other companies uh, like Linera as well. 
Uh, there's a lot of talent that kind of came from that pool of initial engineers and developers and designers uh, from those early days. It's not surprised to see them achieving kind of big success post then. Uh, when it comes to Move, I mean, I think Move has been spreading like wildfire ever post Libra. Uh, even before uh, we launched, there was a company called Zero Libra who shipped a kind of a fork of DM, which we were excited about, seeing the technology being used in open. Uh, obviously, Aptos Move, uh, Sweet Move coming out after that. Um, and then you see companies like Movement, uh, you see Anisha, you see uh, Supra, all adopting the Aptos flavor of Move. So spreading that language out to further uh, different networks out there, really important to see. And I think one thing that's under, under, not really well understood about Aptos is that we get excited when people use our tech. You know, we've seen people leveraging our consensus protocols, leveraging Block STM, uh, Starkware uses it, Polygon uses it, many other companies as well, um, using our language, uh, name a couple of those. That's good for our industry, right? So the more that people kind of coalesce around these set of technologies means that the whole industry is moving forward. And so we're, we're really excited to see that happen in this space. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, uh, many blockchains, they have their own, uh, uh, you know, when they try to present the best thing about themselves. Like Solana says, we are like consumer apps. If somebody is trying to think that where the consumer apps will be built, it will be built on Solana. Ethereum says that, okay, fine, I'm the settlement layer. Layer 2 says that, okay, all the applications that were, that if you want to build applications on Ethereum, it's not possible. So layer 2s are going to be the next internet where the, all the applications are built. What is the unique selling proposition of Aptos in one line? <laughs> Uh, I have a technical answer, but I'll give the uh, I'll give the, uh, the non-technical one, which is Aptos is where we want to see the new new economy be built. And so I want to expand upon that and what that means, the new economy being built. It's really around a set of kind of four different things that we think are really important. One is finance, seeing financial markets move on chain through Flank and Templeton issuing funds on Aptos, through BlackRock issuing funds on Aptos, through DeFi printers kind of coming up and being able to support. New things are impossible in Trad5, uh, that's important. The other thing that's important is new laws of advertising and, and loyalty. So we see some of the largest companies in the world, like NBC Universal, thinking about how do loyalty programs work across their plethora of properties out there? And seeing others in the space really think about that very clearly, and then looking at Aptos as, look, this is the only chain that can support scale and cost required for a large scale, 100 million user loyalty program. Now when you have a 100 million user, lo user loyalty program, you have natural evolution for new forms of advertising, right? We start to learn about those, those user behaviors on chain. You can actually start to advertise certain things to them that make sense. Uh, if you're, for instance, going to Rotten Tomatoes a bunch of times, maybe there's a coupon that makes sense for AMC uh, headed your way uh, to, to incentivize you to go to the movie theater. Uh, and so seeing this flywheel of ad tech, commerce, uh, loyalty, and then payments coming together, like we believe that kind of is the new economy that we want to see built on Aptos. Right, absolutely. Uh, one thing that's definitely like, you know, uh, a standard in technology world, given you are the CTO of Aptos and you've been a technologist for a while is a technology doesn't hit scale unless it's being uh, like, you know, educated as well as uh, it's, it's been uh, talked about by Indian developers in the ecosystem. There is no, there is no way like, you know, a, a technology or a language or any kind of like, you know, uh, a developer ecosystem uh, scaling can happen without a developer ecosystem, right? And in the past also a few ecosystems have tried to, uh, with their own uh, ways, who the Indian developers get them to use them, right? Uh, what uniquely Aptos is uh, purposed for the Indian developers and the Indian developer community. I know you guys have a very strong India lead to lead developer ecosystem community in India, but what specifically are the programs Aptos is running for developers in India to learn, grow, uh, do their own startups and apps, build their own apps on Aptos, or maybe like, you know, support the ecosystem, the new growing move language uh, across. What, what are you guys doing? Yeah, this is where we have a phenomenal team on the ground led by Naresh, Sneha, Ayushka, and others um, who are helping to build that community aspect. So three people at least are working full-time from Aptos That's in, right. from yeah. India. That's right. In India, for India. Absolutely. Whoa. Uh, but on top of that, the larger MOVE ecosystem in, in India is not small. There are more than 40 ecosystem projects being built on Aptos today. There was a, a, a hackathon a couple of days ago called Unfold. Uh, that happened, I think, just in a hotel down the street in the Marriott, uh, where you had 200 submissions for the hackathon. Of that, 40 submissions were for Aptos. 
So lots of new developers happening out there as well. You have IIT winter schools. We have uh, more than 500 developers in India building on Aptos today. Um, and of our eight and a half million Monday active addresses, we believe about six and a half million of them are coming, coming out of India. So India is a necessity for us. It is a market that is very important for us. And we want to see the best Indian devs come to Aptos doing innovation with the key properties that Aptos has that others don't. Uh, taking advantage of the low fees, the high throughput, the user experience uh, improvements that we have, and just shipping in a country that is very receptive to Web3. Like that's something that's extremely surprising to me. You know, I've been here twice this year. I expect to come back a lot next year. Um, and the ecosystem continues to grow like crazy. Uh, I also want to know that, like, what do you think that these financial institutions that you you spoken? Uh, where are they going to come? I mean, most people think that for Black Rocks and the biggest financial institutions, for them, security is, sup is, the, is the number one priority. Security of the chain. Uh, that's the reason they'll go to Ethereum. Most people believe that. But Black Rock has shown openness to other chains as well. Uh, so if, suppose, Larry Fink is listening to this podcast, uh, what are you going to tell it, tell it to him that if a financial institutions like BlackRock or JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs want to tokenize their uh, their funds or assets on chain, why they can come to Aptos and probably try Aptos out? Well, the good thing is BlackRock has already tokenized Biddle Fund on top of Aptos. So that's a good thing. So they already definitely uh, recognize the security of us, of what we do. And that's where Move comes in, right? Move is a very secure language. No security is its first principle. After that is performance. So it's not security first. It's, it's security first and not performance first. Oh, that's one thing. And then I think the core principles of Aptos, we build on very you know, fundamental foundations of uh, system software. Everything is theoretical, theoretically proven. Uh, we have formal verification. We have things that aren't available for other infrastructures to make sure that you, when you develop an Aptos, it's extremely safe and secure. So in that way, we're very much enterprise ready. Our today's uh, uh, 100K, Bitcoin is crossed 100K, 100,000 US dollar. It's, it's such a nice feeling to record a po podcast on a very iconic day. I mean, it's a historic day. Yes. What, what are your true emotions uh, when it comes to Bitcoin and seeing Bitcoin crossing 100K? What is the overall feeling at Aptos and what are your true raw emotions right now? My most raw emotion is like, this is going to bring so many more people into the space. Right? This... this uh, this recognition that Bitcoin is, is fundamentally something of value for people uh, it makes blockchain seem much, much more inevitable going forward. And our job at Aptos and for the larger Web3 ecosystem is always to bring that future forward. We want to see the adoption where society is interoperating on decentralized physical, decentralized, centralized, decentralized infrastructure. And that's so important for us to see happen. And this is just a good step forward for that. Yeah, this is just a good step forward. Uh, so I think we're coming to an end. This was an amazing, amazing podcast, uh, and uh, and I'm sure it has it has increased your understanding of Aptos. Uh, in case you like this, please, I mean, I want your comments. There were a couple of alphas, but alphas cannot be direct. I mean, you have to understand what's coming up, right? Uh, if BlackRock is has already deployed uh, on Aptos, I mean, that speaks volume. That speaks volume, right? So, so all your concerns have been answered. In case you still have something left, please do comment. We'll pass it on to Naresh, uh, who is from Aptos team. And uh, we'll all share share his links and you can follow every on Twitter. And uh, let's do it, guys. Okay, thank you very much.